an absolute activist of her own, educational activist, a founder of her own school in Ahmedabad in India, and of course, <coughs> been absolutely critical towards bringing design into the curriculum, and not only having done that and being an absolute success in India, but now taking that model through to 33 countries all around the world. I mean, if you want to feel the power of making a difference and making a change and starting in one school and then having that replicated into 33 countries around the world and all driven by this woman sitting right here in front of you, Kiran Birsetti. Um, I'd like to actually start my story with a question. So how many of us are parents here? Okay. So how many of you will take your child back to a doctor that prescribes wrong medication or gives the wrong diagnosis? Child had a tonsillitis, doctor took out the kidney, hey, give him another chance. <coughs> we wouldn't, right? And yet, we continue to take our children back to schools that serve obsolete, redundant pedagogy in the name of education. And that's my story. I started with my son, who was all of six years, when in a single stroke, a teacher removed the word choice from his vocabulary. His crime? Um, he chose to write his version of the essay, The Cow. And that got me thinking about choice. And I think what Kige said yesterday was, designers, I think, tend to respond. Um, and the ability to respond and the responsibility is what defines uh, the solutions or the next steps. So choice was what I wanted to bring back into the vocabulary. Um, I was not an educationist, and I think that was a big blessing. Um, I was a designer, so um, I kind of knew what I could do better. And then look at the situation in India. 200 million children go to school. Only 18 million graduate college, of which 90% have unemployable skills. So we were, every year, uh, producing, I think, a staggering number of graduates whose spirits really are being crushed by this feeling of, I can't. So what was my response to be able to design an approach to education that would equip our children with the tools to be able to say, I can, instead of, I can't. So in 2001, I started my school, Riverside. And uh, like Ravi said, um, design thinking allows you to really go back to understanding what the real problem is, rather than just coming up with a school that said, let's be more creative, let them study better. Uh, the questions that really became the lens was, um, who is a child? What is childhood? How long is childhood? And what, those, what, what are those experiences all about? <coughs> Uh, so Riverside really was designed around um, design thinking principles. Um, I looked at several ideas about how do you get children to also care about quadratic equations and also be concerned and sensitized to child abuse or, you know, um, democracy. And so it became not an either or, but a both and program. And I think that made all the difference at the school. Um, in the last 10 years, uh, the work that my children have been doing at the school is really about understanding that they can do well and they can do good. And I think that's a very, very important, empowering feeling that the children were getting. So when I started realizing that it was working at Riverside, I mean, academically, because of this approach, my children were outperforming the top 10 schools in India. And if you outperform the top 10 schools in India, Imagine the kind of um, sort of empowerment the child gets, the well-being, the sense of well-being that they were getting. So in 2007, I said, OK, if it's working at Riverside, and Riverside is a private school, um, at full capacity, it will still be just impacting 350 children. It had to go beyond. So in 2007, we took the story to the city of where I come from. And then look at the city I come from. It's the land of Mahatma Gandhi. Yeah. <laughs> you can't help but be uh, sort of uh, inspired by his simple quote, be the change you wish to see in the world. It essentially meant stop passing the buck. You want to do something, go and do it. The do, do thank. Um, so we went to the municipal corporation. I have in the city that I live the best design minds. That's the, we have the best design college, the best Ma management college, the best architecture college, and yet, collectively, we were doing nothing for the city. So that just didn't make sense to me. Um, so went to these colleges and kind of said, we have the best brains here, and we're doing nothing. The city should be a landscape. 
<coughs> we should be getting every part of the city, you know, um, sort of uh, sharing the ethos of what design thinking can do. So how do we come together? So collaboration, I've re realized, is probably the key thing, the idea of sharing. Um, I think in education more than, I don't know whether in the other fields as much, but I know in design fields also we're really, really tight about sharing an idea, but we don't share. So it's so ridiculous. I mean, the point is, you can't be everywhere, but your idea can go everywhere. And I think that's just imperative. So we got them together, we went to the police, and I remember one of the stories, I was sitting in front of this police commissioner, and I said, sir, I want the street. I have to close it down for traffic, and I have to convert it into a place for children and childhood. He says, no, madam, please go to the park. I said, no, sir, I want the street. He kept looking at me, no, madam. And I kept saying, I want, sir. <laughs> so we just had this face off, and then he kept looking at me, saying, why don't you take one small street? I said, no, sir, I want the main street. And here I'm thinking, how the hell do I get him to understand it's so important? Luckily, India has several milestone dates, okay? So we have uh, the Independence Day, and then we have Gandhi Jayanti, and then we have um, Children's Day. So we have these, these dates that are important in the history <laughs> of our nation. Luckily, I was in July, and August was happening. So I said, sir, <laughs> let's close it down on August 15th. Anyway, it's a public holiday. <laughs> Give me the street. So he thought, okay. She'll do it once, and that's it, you know, she'll get off my back. Uh, so <laughs> I got the permission from the Municipal Corporation and the police on the 8th of August. And by 15th, I had to turn this around. And I remember I had gone to drop my son uh, to the boarding school, and I had to come back and get this uh, going. But I think responsibility and ability to respond, uh, the whole idea that the design mindset is that you don't give up. So we just got all our uh, guns together on 15th of August. For the very first time in the history of the city, we closed down the busiest streets and it became a celebration of childhood. Every single child, all free. The citizens were giving their services. They were giving their talent. They were giving their skill to this place. It was beautiful. There were 4,000 children on the street and they were dancing and there was tattoo happening and there was this fabulous feeling that everybody was in it together. When the police came and saw that, and when the municipal corporation came and saw that, they said this has to be part of the ethos of our city. So since 2007 till date, the city now has been no nominated as the first child-friendly city in India. So having said that and having done that, I said, okay, this is making sense, now it has to go beyond. So in 2009, I remember a friend of mine uh, called me up, it was in February, and he said, okay, Kiran, um, we're gonna do this ambitious um, celebration in India called the Joy of Giving Week. That means every Indian, from the rickshawala to the biggest industrialist, will understand what giving looks like. And we will put this on the week of Mahatma Gandhi's birthday. And all the ideas he was sharing were, were adult-centric. You know, corporate uh, uh, CEOs will, will do a ramp walk, or there will be um, NGOs that will do um, poof, uh, you know, celebration fundraisers. I said, Venkat, it has to come from the child. We have to reimagine, and we have to get children to understand that they can think <coughs> about this response to the idea of citizenship. We have to get our children to be proactive, concerned, responsible, and um, uh, informed. So he said, how will we do that? I said, okay, let me work on this design thinking idea of getting children to look at the process of change. The entire conversation designed for change happened over a phone call, 45 minutes. My mobile was sweating, I was sweating. It was like, you know, it kept slipping from one and I kept putting it to the other <laughs> ear and, and, and getting this, I was getting excited as we were thinking this out and I kind of unpacked the entire idea just through that phone call. And then from March, to June when I kicked it off, it was literally on the go. And I must say, my other colleague there, Pranay, who was with me as a co-designer, co we just put the design process into a simple framework. Feel anything that bothers you. Imagine a way to make it better. Go out and do it, and then share it. So in very simple terms, we took this whole design thinking process that I've learned it in, in, I, I mean, in my college, what all of us designers do about being able to locate what the real problem is, as, as Haliandra said. Otherwise, we solve the wrong problems really well, but they don't work. They don't, they, there isn't long-lasting change. How do you locate what the real problem is and not go around solving the wrong problem? So the feel component was about that. So it was driven by empathy, the idea that you don't have to be rich, 
or 18 to make change happen. All you need to do is feel. And then imagine, brainstorm a way to make it better, work with teams, collaborate, build on each other's ideas, and then the act of do, the act that action. Great intention is fine, but if it doesn't get followed by action, it has no value. So the whole uh, idea of the action point was incredible. And then the sharing. <coughs> For the very first time, we are sharing stories of children from Bhutan, from Nagaland, from the villages of India, from the deserts of, uh, uh, of you know, um, Australia. We have got the largest collection of stories. So the very first year when I kicked this off in 2009, I designed it to factor in the key uh, milestones of Indian history. And I think that's important. You have to have it resonate with the citizens. So it kicked off on, on the Independence Day. Gandhi's birthday, which is October 2nd, became Be the Change Day. November 14th is when we announced the 100 winners, and we had the celebration. So we actually had it part of the history of the nation. First year, in 2009, 30,000 schools in India. We sent it out to 30,000 schools in India, every kind of school. It was the most inclusive idea. It was free. There was not, no money attached to this. The only thing that you had to do was invest your ideas. And then I had the great opportunity to be able to speak at TED in 2009 um, and share the story. In 2010, it just went viral. What I was so humbled and, and, and amazed by was that once that story of change came, became public, people from around the world, for the very first time, I'm not a Facebook person, but I remember on the 13th of Jan, when apparently my talk went live, I got like something like 200 Facebook invites. I said, why are people inviting me on Facebook? I have no idea. It happened to be because of the talk. And that's it. I said, responsibility. I didn't know I was going to go global. <coughs> but I had to respond to this need. It was so simple. I'm not going to sit back and say, oh, the world wants to do this, but hello, I, I have not been able to design it as a world idea. So very simply, put everything online. It became free. I loved it. I loved the fact that when you leave an idea and leave it to the world, people take it, innovate with it, do magic with it, make it their own stories. And that was so powerful. So put everything online, got it translated. Uh, I Skype literally every single day. And I'm Skyping at the oddest hours because somebody is in Peru, somebody <laughs> is in, 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 in Slovenia. We Skype, we get the person to be excited and infected by the idea. And then everything is there. You want something, it's on the site. So we have everything free. So any partner around the world can just download the material and start a Design for Change chapter in their country. And uh, that's how the response has been. Today, in India, the Design for Change curriculum that we had to respond to in design is going back into the schools through the textbook. So Longman Pearson has become our partner. The largest comic book industry has created storybooks. And they're coming up with an edition every year. So it's going to be stories of our children being heroes. And uh, we are celebrating in India, Be the Change Day. So Fantastic. it's going to be an annual celebration. Congratulations. What did I tell you? <laughs> A force of nature. <laughs>